There's our 50 caliber ammo box. You can pick them up at Fleet and Farm for around 10 bucks. First thing we're going to do is take that carrying handle off the top because that's we want that flat for pots and pans. And then we're going to take the uh, rubber insert out like on the inside. On the Blue whale. Blue whale. Yeah. I knew that one. All right, just take a uh, screwdriver and a hammer, chisel, and you can knock away the top latch. It's just spot welded on. Once your handle's off, take this out and just take a screwdriver and pry out that gasket. Now once you take that gasket out, you're going to lose the tightness of the lid. And to remedy that, you just pound down on this section where the latch hooks onto the lid. There's the, the, the uh, lid itself. Just take a hammer and pound down here. And that'll tighten things right up again. This part's pretty straightforward. I, I don't even really measure. I just kind of square off an opening. You know, uh, to load your fuel into. I'll just take a file and clean that up a little bit and make it look better. So now I'll just kind of mock this up to where I want it, uh, where I'm going to put the latch and the hinge and get the welder out. First I just tack it in. We're going to make the uh, airflow on the front, so I just cut out a disc and then uh, drill the hole into the middle of it. I'm going to put a bolt in here, and uh, I'll put a little, I'll weld a little tab on here so we can move it. But basically, that'll be our airflow controller for the stove. That pretty much finishes up the door. And that's for airflow. I can open it completely up. And I'll have to clean that all up and then we'll paint it up later too. For the legs, I'm just going to cut out some of this channeling. And I want them to be able to fold up underneath. So I just use a bolt and I, I use a little bit longer bolt because I'm going to use the extension inside to lay a grate on top. So the bolts will actually support a grate on top as well. Uh, you don't need a grate but it helps extend the life of the of the uh, stove itself because the the fire is not sitting right on the uh, the bottom but these will fold up underneath there's that side I'll flip it around and do the other
there's the legs. And they can fold up underneath. So when you're carrying it, on the inside that'll support the grate I was talking about. You can see how they extend it out. Got some three inch pipe here from uh, Fleet and Farm and I'm going to roll a uh, fitting on top. Eventually I'll get that rolled on. I'm using a uh, just a three inch drain as a mold and the pipe will fit over this once I get it uh, welded on there and cut through. All right, so I got this uh, rolled out, so I got the basic form of three inches, and then I cut it a little short, and now I'm going to uh, cut this down and weld it together to fit inside here, but that gave me a, a nice head start just to have a, uh, you know, a, a three inch circumference, something I could mold it around. Again, I'm not doing anything complicated here, I, I have barely if any done any measuring. I'm just doing this all by hand and fitting it up. Uh, it's something anybody could do. And there we go. Got it fit right in there. Now I'll just clamp it and weld it up at that seam. Okay, I've got the hole cut in top. Uh, I've got the uh, pipe attachment fitted and all I've got to do now is weld it on. that. Now I'm going to put a lock system into that. I'll show you that in a minute just using three metal screws so it locks into place. But it is tight and it'll, it'll hold on. Now if I didn't have a welder, obviously the welder is a great advantage here. If I didn't have a welder I would simply just cut the hole uh, and use JB Weld. And uh, maybe I'd just you know take a slice out of a three inch pipe instead of welding it together. But there's lots of options to do it yourself uh, without a welder. Okay, I drilled two metal screws into each side, one on the other side and one on this side. And now I'll take them out and uh, make a guide so the uh, pipe can fit down on top of it and lock in. I'll show you that in a sec. Alright, I just carved out a slot using the uh, guide hole that I uh, originally screwed it into. And I put the screws on there. Yeah, and then just twist it on both sides. Just like factory, man. Just like factory. These do come apart, so you could flatten these out to fit in the back of your pack, but I recommend, you know, knocking off the corners so they don't stick through anything. There it is. Fini. Got a nice little rain cap on there. Nine feet of pipe. I think we got to fire it up. There's a shot of the inside, and like I was saying, it's nice to have the grate in there. It extends the life of uh, the stove itself. But another thing you can use it for up a couple extra tent stakes or just a steel dowel, cut it into two sections, put it on the side. This thing can double as a portable grill. You can operate it of course outside the tent, maybe for some grilled squirrel sandwiches, uh, but it's a nice, uh, nice little feature. And there's a lip on the lid so it covers up the holes when the uh, stove is in operation. You don't have to worry about it leaking smoke. Nice, huh? All right. I got my tactical torch from tactical.com. Always carry this when I'm camping. Tactical. Tactical. Tactical makes everything better. Tactical. More expensive, more better. Tactical. Tactical stove. Tactical torch. I'm tactical. I'm super tactical. All right. There we go. See? That's a tactical fire. Now listen, if you want to make a donation or you want to pay me, I will train you how to say tactical. Tactical fire. There's tactical smoke right there. Tactical smoke. All right, like any stove, even one that you buy online from some famous store and pay a lot of money for, you want to light it up and fire it real hard before you ever use it, especially inside of a tent. Uh, take it out and just let it burn. Let it burn the oil off the pipes 
and the stove and whatever residues are on there. So give it a good hard fire before you ever use it. And you know it's done curing or burning all that off when there is no more smoke coming off it. And then still give it another 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Two things that I added here at the end before I called this project complete. I just happened to find an insulating fiberglass stove rope in one of my junk drawers. So I did put that in on, uh, on the top drawer just to give it a little more, uh, I guess, make it more airtight. And then I bought, for three bucks, I bought a six inch galvanized uh, damper, which I'm going to cut down to the size of the, the pipe and uh, fit it in there so I have a little more control over... Uh, how much airflow there is. That, that comes in real handy for cooking or just trying to get a fire down for simmering. With a little bit of grinding time and fitting, I've got my damper in. Just a couple upgrades. I'm pretty happy with uh, the end result. I ended up with a packable stove for around 10 pounds. And it cost me somewhere, I didn't, I didn't keep real strict uh, tabs on it, but it cost me somewhere between uh, probably 70 and 80 bucks. And considering a packable stove around eight pounds can cost you 400 some dollars, uh, this wasn't too bad of a deal. For both projects now, I'll be looking for uh, a good way to pack them in. You know, I'll be looking for military surplus packs or maybe a good nylon duffel bag, something as lightweight as I can get it to uh, efficiently pack them in and contain them. Um, and then, of course, I'll be looking forward to a cold night if we get another one to test it out with. And the reason why I went to this, uh, truly, you know, when I winter camp, I usually don't bring a tent. Uh, weight is, is uh, you know, a careful, considered commodity when you're, when you're uh, hiking long distance in the winter. And uh, I've just never considered taking a tent or, or hot tenting it in. But with the kids now and wanting them to experience some of these things, um, I want a, a shelter that's packable and the ability to uh, keep the tent warm as well.